Hey y'all, I'm Corey Ashton, and today we're gonna be looking at my five favorite Divi features. These are the things that I use pretty much every single time I build out a Divi website. So if you're watching this video, Divi is a incredible page builder plugin inside of a WordPress website. And if you're interested more in that, I have an entire playlist here on my YouTube channel dedicated to Divi. I'll put that link in the description box below. But let's get to it, y'all. I'm gonna show you five features right now. It doesn't cost you any extra money. All of these features already live inside of the Divi theme. When your business is ready to get online, Get a ready-made website for less than a dollar a day at PressHappy.com. All right, so we'll get started just diving right into your dashboard. If you are running the Divi theme, and hopefully that's why you're watching this video, uh, you're going to go over here to Divi and go to Theme Options for the first feature I'm going to show you. And this one's just kind of really entry-level, total beginner style, but if you prefer the classic editor uh, to Gutenberg, and uh, you want to enable the classic editor, and many of us do, where we prefer, if we're gonna use a block editor or a drag and drop editor, we're using Divi, right? And then on other pages and posts, you might not want that Gutenberg style block editor there. So you can come in here and click on, of course, Divi theme options over here, right? And then go into Builder, and then go into Advanced, and right down here at the bottom, it says enable classic editor. And so you can just toggle that on and it is now enabled and click save changes so that you don't have to have another plugin out there disabling blocks. This little script right here will do that for you. And now when you go into your pages or your posts, you have two options, the classic editor or Divi. Okay, so the second feature I wanna show you tonight is the global color settings. And if y'all have used the uh, palette over here, if you go into theme options and go to general, you have this default color palette that you can set. And this is really, really a great first step to do as you're coming in here, setting up the website for the very first time, adding in your logo, you know, setting some of these kind of general housekeeping settings. Coming in here and adding in your default color palette to use across the website is a really great option. But if you go into a page or a post, let's go to the front side of the website. Let's say you're over here and you want to maybe change this color. Maybe you've built out the entire site and the client comes along and says, you know what, that's really not the exact shade that I needed. I need that changed. Well, if you had gone to the extent of building out this entire website using that color inside of different modules, then it would be a manual effort for you to go back to every single page, every single post, and change that color inside of every single module. Whew, that is a lift. That's what we tried to eliminate with CSS back in the day. So they've harnessed the ability for us to do that now by using global colors that really truly write across your entire website. So if you change them in one place, it affects the entire website of where you applied that color, right? So cool. That's one of the settings inside of Divi that I love anyway when it comes to making any module a global element. You change it one time and it changes across the whole website. So that's exactly what you would do with something like this. You would have your gear icon and open up. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can enjoy this together a little bit more. Slide this over. Still want you to be able to see this color back here. But let's say we go into the design tab here. Actually, that's the background. Let's go right here. Here's our default color palette that we saw earlier, which is a hot mess, by the way. Whew, please never use this blend. Um, but and, and that's our saved color palette, right? But if we wanted to go to global here, this is where you can save a color and use it across the entire website. And if you needed to change that color, you would come in here, change that color, and click OK. Look at this alert pop up though. Immediately it says, wait, 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 are you sure? You've made a change to a global color. This will affect 
all instances of this global color across your entire website, do you wish to proceed, right? And if we decide yes, then we click yes, and that color now changes here and literally everywhere on the website that we had used that uh, kind of tan color that we just changed. You see this little dash, that just changed to that green color. Um, and there are icons changing to that green color. All of that just changed. And, and throughout every page, every post, every part of this website, uh, you see this button changed as well. All of that changed based on that one click. That's the power of global colors. So the third feature we're gonna look at is the Divi library inside of your website as you start to build out your pages and your posts. If you fall in love with one of your modules that you've used and built, and you wanna maybe replicate that throughout your whole website, maybe you wanna replicate this uh, two row, you know, three column breakout right here, you really love that and you wanna give that look maybe each service page, there's a really cool tool inside of Divi. I'm gonna go ahead and enable the builder and uh, I'm gonna scroll down now to that section because I just think it looks so sweet, so slick, so cool. Okay, love this. I'm going to click on the section, right? Because I wanna capture everything here, even that background. Um, so, and I'm gonna click on what looks like a little save icon here. Click on that. Let's give it a name. Um, we'll call this um, uh, three column, right? Three column. Uh, full uh, gallery, right? Three column full gallery, really cool there. You can make this a global item too if you wanted to. That way, uh, if you made a change on any page anywhere to this, it would all stay the same, which is really nice whenever you're dealing with like hours of operation or maybe an address. Making that a global feature is mwah, beautiful. But for something like this, you might want to change out what it says on each service page or wherever you put it throughout the website. So I'm not gonna make this global. I'm gonna keep it just there to add to my library, save to library. So that's basically copying this whole section and putting it in your library. So that if and when uh, you go to another page, I'm gonna exit out of here, All right? Let's exit out of this page. And I'm going to Let's jump over to, let's say we really like that and we wanna put that maybe that same breakout. Let's go put that over on our approach page if we don't already have it there. Let's go look at that page really quickly. And, and we're talking about innovation and experience and integrity, love all those things. Yeah, this is kind of a little boring compared to those other pages. So let's enable the builder again. And remember now that whole section lives in my library. So I can go over here and I can add a new section Right, I can add by clicking the plus sign, add a new section, and instead of selecting regular specialty or full width, you'll come here and click add from library. And now we've got our three column full width gallery right there. Click on that, open that up. It drops right in perfectly. I can make any changes I want to to it. I can take it and drag it up to another area on my page if I wanted to and, uh, and start to play and include that really cool layout on any page, any post. Okay, the fourth feature I want to talk to you about is just amazing and I've used it, I probably use it on every single Divi project I build out, the disable, enable option. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Disable or enable. Let's say this page is just a little too long that I'm just not a fan of how it looks on mobile version, right? Let's say that we're scrolling through here and we're like, God, good grief, this is really lengthy now that I added that that new section, man, it's just way too long. I'm not a fan of it. Maybe on mobile, we want that to disappear. But on desktop, oh, that's pretty good. The page isn't too long on desktop. It looks like it, it's gonna play nicely. Well, you can come in here and uh, click on the three dot extra menu there and go to disable and choose to not show it on a cell phone version maybe not show it on a tablet version and leave it visible for the desktop version right there. Um, and so if we click save on that and go back to our mobile view, you'll actually see it on this view, you'll actually see it start to mute out. See how that kind of muted? That kind of gives us a visual uh, heads up that that is not going to be seen once you log out of your builder. So really cool option there. I tell you one of the Okay, my fifth feature that I have to brag on, which is just amazing. 
I did an entire video on it last week, which is show and hide um, different components on your website based on logic. So watch this. If I have a user who is logged out of this website completely, I don't want it to show um, certain content. But when they log in, I want this page to show different content. So I went ahead and logged in off camera just for security purposes. And right now you see my happy dashboard, today's goal, make happy choices. That's living there. These things that you see here are all brought to you by WooCommerce. But this is just sitting here as a Divi module. So if I enable the builder, you're gonna see it that way. It's kind of really cool. Check this out, y'all. So my module here, if I open this up and I go into advanced, I have a condition on it that says display only if the user is logged in. Completely disappears if you're logged out, even though it's still here on this page. It appears the moment the person is logged in. It's really cool stuff that you can do. Uh, it's some of the struggles that I've had with doing all sorts of content based on a user's status, based on maybe their device, based on maybe um, uh, the time of day, right? You can really get creative with it. If you're interested more in that one feature, I'll put the link to that in the description box below so you can go check that out and kind of deep dive into that one conditional logic section back here in this advanced tab. It's really cool. You can stack the conditions, you know, you can add another condition to it. Just really, really cool uh, what you can do here. Get creative with it. All right, y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.